Hello, everyone. Really nice to be here, and, and we've heard so nice presentations, and especially after Daiva, it's nice to tell about what we are doing in Finland, but Daiva all, almost said it all, I think. She had very nice views. So first, I would like to take you to a Finnish forest. I will show you a video. It's a, we call it our brand video, and I would like to know what you think about it. So in the end, it said, good life with dogs. So what do you think, if this is our brand, what, what do you think of it? We are trying to say that dogs are important companions for people, and we as important companions for dogs have to take good care of them. In the video, you saw the Finnish Spitz, our national breed. We have five national breeds, and the Finnish Spitz is maybe most well-known of them. And we are very proud of our breeds, so we try to promote them in any way. You can see the Finnish Spitz also on our logo. Uh, last year, we had a theme year of the Finnish breeds, and we promoted them in many ways. And I think that we got, got nice publicity, publicity for all the breeds and especially for the Finnish Spitz. Uh, we have a campaign, we are trying to get the Finnish Spitz uh, on UNESCO's list for immaterial cultural heritage. And the first uh, step is uh, to, uh, for the Finnish Spitz to be uh, named on the national list. And um, although we have much publicity, we have a very serious rival for the list because the Finnish sauna is on the list too. <laughs> but we are hoping for the Finnish Spitz to make its way to the international UNESCO list because we are very proud of this primitive breed, which is loved by all the Finns. All right, Daiva told you about cooperation and campaigning, and I very much agree what she says, what she said. First, I'd tell something about dogs in Finland. Satu Ylämononen told you about the same figures yesterday. Uh, in a land of 5.5 million people, we have estimated that we have about 700,000 dogs. This is the estimation of the Finnish Statistical Center. We know for sure that we have about 510,000 10, dogs registered at the Finnish Kennel Club. So this is the estimation is that dogs in Finland live for approximately 10 years. This is how we, we have counted this. And there is a dog in every fourth household in Finland. So we have a big group of dog owners and, and people who are interested in dogs. Also our national breeds are very popular in Finland. Uh, so we have a rate of about 20, 75 or 80% of dogs being microchipped. There are a bit more dogs microchipped than they are registered because we have this uh, rescue organization bringing dogs 
from different countries to Finland, and when they bring dogs to Finland, they also microchip them, but they don't register them. Some of them are registered, but not all. So this is the dog culture in Finland. We don't have stray dogs, but of course we have some lost dogs. Uh, hunting dogs can get lost and, and people can abandon their dogs, but mostly uh, the dogs that are not pedigree dogs, they come from some other countries. Or, or then, we, of course, we also have some puppy mills, but most of our, our dogs are pedigree dogs, are registered dogs in Finland. And as you saw in the video, our vision is good life with dogs. It means that we want all our dogs to be registered and microchipped. We want them to be healthy, well-being, and socialized. And at the moment, there's a new animal welfare law being uh, made in Finland. We have been very active in this process. We have made a long statement by the Finnish Kennel Club. We are stressing the fact that we want all the dogs to be microchipped and registered. And uh, we have campaigned it to the politicians, and, and at the moment it looks like as we could have this in the legislation in the future. So it's really good. Another thing that we have been stressing is the fact that dog, the dogs, it, it's not one breed. That in the legislation uh, should be stated that there are several breeds of dogs that they need breed typical activities. This is a big problem because if one looks at dogs just as one breed, it's, it's a different kind of uh, thinking than if you talk about pedigree dogs and different breeds. As you saw in the video, the Finnish Spitz and the Retriever, they are not the same. <laughs> same, they have different needs. And although all dogs have to be socialized and trained and well taken care of, they still have different kind of needs. And, and this is something that many people don't understand. They think that dogs are just one breed. Uh, then we also, I, our aim is to have as versatile possibilities for dog sports as possible. As you know, dog sports need uh, good venues and, and you need to have good cooperation with the uh, municipality municipalities and so on, so that you can organize dog happenings. And in a country like Finland, we have a big country and long distances, and in the winter time, it's not easy, it's not always easy to buy, buy venues. If some of them have, if some of you have been judging in northern Finland in dog shows, you know that the venues can be quite cold, and, and it's, it's a challenge for us. Also, we want, uh, want to, that uh, they, starting a new hobby or dog sport would be easy, especially for the young people. people. Because many people think that dog shows are expensive and you have to train your dog and so on. We should have some hobbies that are easy to take part in. For example, this rally toko that we talk of, or some kind of agility, at the moment, nose work is coming to Finland, and, and we are trying to get it official yeah, from the beginning of 2019. It's very popular at the moment, and it's easy to begin to as a hobby with the dog. Uh, it's also nice with old dogs, and, and all kind of dogs can have it as a hobby. Uh, the Finnish Kennel Club wants to be the leading expert and guardian of interest in all dog-related matters. And this is also what our members want. We have um, uh, about 150,000 members, 2,000 dog clubs, and, and then the rest is, is persons. So people want to belong to the Finnish Kennel Club. Um, and so if they are our members, we also have to give them something more than just the membership and the dog magazine. And we just um, this uh, spring, we, we had a survey for our members. We asked them what they think about us and what would they like us to do. 
And there was a majority of people who, who wanted us to be the guardian of dog interests in Finland. They also thought that we are doing quite good work, which is good. And this is important that the situation is, is the same in the future also, because we have a... Uh, there, there are young people who are quite critical, and, and as time goes by, we will get more and more critical people if we are not, if we don't listen to them and, and create a better membership for them to. Uh, communication in the 21st century is very challenging because people don't believe official information. They want to think for their sem themselves. They want information to be entertaining. They, they, are lot, they read the social media and they want to invent things by themselves. So that's a challenge for us. We have to be interesting, but we also have to be trustworthy. People don't uh, believe in pedigree dogs. They, don't believe in vaccinations. They, they don't believe what institutions say. So we have to find another way of, of spreading information. And, and this is when it comes to sharing information and cooperating, as Daiva told. Uh, we have many different target groups. One cannot think that you just give information to one target group. And the breeders are very important in our membership survey. The people stated that when they wanted information about dogs or getting a dog, the breeders and the local or the breed clubs, they were the most important sources of information before kennel club information. So breeders are important. Dog owners means all dog owners, not just dog people. Veterinarians, are, they are a very critical group in Finland, but they are very, very essential to us. And I think that we should cooperate much more with them. There's a new, very radical generation of veterinarians growing, and, and they are very, very critical towards pedigree dogs, as I'm sure that you all know. Then we have many cooperation partners. It's like uh, different government officials, county officials, different um, organizations. The more we do cooperation with them, the more we can share, the more we, we can participate people into doc ac activities, activities and, and they can spread uh, the important messages. Decision makers are important that and at the moment, we are lobbying them quite hardly <laughs> because of this animal welfare law and because we want to get the all dogs microchipped and registered. But then there are also opinion leaders, especially in the social media, and we are trying to find ways to contact them because some persons who made video blogs or, or things like that, they can have a great effect on especially the young people. In Finland, they are very, very popular. And the media, we are very active with the media. If we have something that we want to say, we will publish a press release. And we try to be um, in good time before some, if we know that there's a conversation coming up, we try to publish the press release and contact the media before the conversation is everywhere. So we get to say the first word, and that's important. So our uh, Harry Lehkonen, the, the head of our board, and also Eva Antinen, the head of our council, and our CEO, Marku Mähönen, they are active in the media. And then we have our experts. So it's really important that the, the journalists know know that they can contact us and they always get a statement or, the, or they get information for, from us. And the great public, of course. Now, 
I haven't said any, anything about the youth, but the youth is, they are everywhere because young people can be opinion leaders, they can be decision makers nowadays. Of course, they, they belong to the public, but I don't think that they should be treated as, as a group itself. Of course, children are another thing, but I think that the youth in Finland is so active nowadays that we have to think of them as a part of all these groups. Also, there are very young veterinarians who are very, very active, so age isn't the one thing to consider always. Actually, my topic was campaigning responsible breeding and responsible dog ownership, but I, I must say that I don't believe in maybe the old kind of campaigning. I believe that deeds talk better than words. You can campaign via deeds. You can participate people like in the dog day. This is a perfect example of, of campaigning good things. People can participate and, and they, can, they can make new things by themselves. Not, it's not good that an institution comes and says that you have to do this and this. They have to invent it by themselves. And they like it. As Diva said, they want to, be, they want to show that they are responsible and, 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 and they can make a difference. I believe in this. And of course, our 150,000 members, they are very important cooperation partners. Also those people who are not actually dog people, who are dog owners, because we have, there, you, there we have all the interest groups. They are decision makers, journalists, veterinarians, they own dogs. They may not be active in, in dog hobbies or dog sports, but they are very, very important opinion leaders in many ways. And we should find new ways of cooperating with them and, and, uh, and somehow getting them to be involved in this dog world, maybe a bit more. And also, uh, all our cooperation partners are important. We have much cooperation nowadays with different, different parties. So here are some examples of how we have been lobbying. <laughs> uh, the first picture, th these are all posts in Twitter or, or Facebook. We, we use the social media much. The first picture is, uh, is uh, from a meeting with the Minister of Agriculture. And we were lobbying the, uh, our views to the new animal welfare law. So, the head of our board, Mr. Harri Lehkonen on the left, and then Markku Mähönen on the right, they visited the minister, Jari Leppä. They had a very, very nice meeting. We were, of course, we were well prepared for the meeting, and, and we had a clear agenda. And it happened that the, the minister, he had owned Finnish spitzes before. And so we gave him the book written by Angela Cavill, and he was very pleased. And after this, we, had have, we have had very good cooperation with the minister. And, and he, he usually he makes statements where he says that the Finnish Kennel Club is doing good work, and, and, and they really know what they are doing. So this, is, this was really nice. And of course, we had to share this information in the social media so that our members and our interest groups know that this is what we are doing. And the second post is, um, it's news about abolishing dog taxation in Finland. We used to have, uh, the counties had the right to tax, uh, take tax from, taxes from dog owners and they could decide by themselves if they Get, take the tax or not, and there were two big cities in Finland that to, took the tax, and all other counties had just abolished this a long time ago. So we lobbied this also very heavily. When the mayor of Helsinki, uh, they, they got a new mayor, we lobbied the politicians and the mayor, and, and when he was um, 
against this taxation. All the other politicians also wanted to <laughs> show that they are against it. And, and then also the govern, governor of the other city, he, the, the mayor of the other big city, wanted to abolish this. So it was abolished from the both, both cities. And after this, also the law giving the counties the right to, to take taxation from dock owners was abolished. So of course, we made, a, again, we shared the news in the social media and, at, and in the web. And of course, we made a press release. And all the politicians were happy. And they were all saying, we made it. It was very good for them. And then, we, of course, we thanked them and so on. So this was good news. This law was over 100 years old, so we made history. And then in the right, there's, I think that you all have seen these articles about pedigree dogs problems. And this article was published in our main newspaper. It was four pages long with, of course, pictures of all kinds of dogs and, and veterinarians' comments and so on. And it was in, on Sunday morning <laughs> when it was published. So there was no time to make a press release, but we shared this in all social medias. And then we told what we have been do doing for the health of dogs, how many health tests we ha have, how the breed clubs are doing great work, and so on. And I think that it went also very well. People shared the post publications in Twitter, because Twitter is very powerful nowadays if you want to contact the journalists and the politicians and so on. So we have to be alert almost any, <laughs> any time of the day. Anything can happen, and, and these kind of messages are, are very strong. And then in, in the, here in the left, um, this is about involving our members. We have 19 local kennel clubs, and they are quite traditional. And now we are trying to uh, make them cooperate more and change their culture and contact people and, and so on. So we had a seminar, which was very good, and we even have had a lovely dog there. So we posted something on, on the social media telling that we are doing this kind of kind of uh, cooperation with the kennel clubs and, and they are very happy with it and, and that was nice. and and then in the middle this is about participating just would would you say normal dog owners we had the dog day in finland this april it was very popular and um, there was a um, journalist of the main news magazine in Finland, actually the same magazine that you see there on the right side. And she had been doing um, some news, news report from the dog day uh, happenings in Helsinki. Then she pub published this post in, on Twitter saying that, oh, I had such a lovely day doing reporting the dog day. My dog was there also. And so we shared this, and again, it was very popular. So we showed that everyone has dogs. The journalists have dogs, and, and they want to participate, and, and, and they want to work for the benefit of dogs. And, and then this day, on the dog day, on Twitter, the posts about the dog day were most popular. So we shared that too. <laughs> we showed that, yes, we really are popular because we have to show that we, we make results. How to campaign pedigree dogs. Diva told much about it, and I completely agree with her. I think that we should tell about the benefits, but we can't deny the problems. But we shouldn't just tell about the problems. I think that maybe during the last years we have we have told so much about the problems that we may have forgot how, how to tell about the solutions for the problems. Because I think that we have to have the solutions. And now we are trying to tell more about the solutions. 
what we have done for the pedigree dogs and what we are doing. We have to be proud of what the pedigree dogs because I think that in the kennel clubs we are doing good work. So we should be proud of it. We should tell about it. And we should work with the breeders. We should give them material in order to also campaign for the pedigree dogs because they are the people. They, they are the very important sources of information. They, they need material and, and tools. All breeders are not information people. So, so if they know the right way to campaign, they can do it. So, so can the breed clubs. And the breed clubs, they often, uh, I think that, uh, that uh, for them, it's, uh, the situation may be very, very difficult when you talk about uh, short muscled breeds or breeds with, uh, with uh, temperament problems or something like that. They need powerful tools and we have to help them. Uh, and then, of course, we have to tell the public about the risks of puppy mills and dog trafficking. Not all people will believe, but we hope that at least some people will believe. We have to tell numbers and, and like, uh, we, we have to be very concrete in, in what we tell. And, of course, we have to support responsible dog ownership. We have to show what it means that the, when a dog is an animal, it needs uh, it, it needs to take walks. It needs good uh, nourishment. The claws have to be clipped. That's the most important issue, I think, many times. And 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 they they need to they have the right to live the good dog life. Uh, Rescue dogs are often campaigned via very touching stories. And I think that we should invent good stories of pedigree dog breeding. Here on the right, you see this man with his, do you know, do you recognize the breed? He's a breeder of Karelian bear dogs. And you can see that he is really in, into it, he, he, he loves his dogs. There's a great story to be told. We should tell it. And now we are thinking of making videos of breeding and, and how, how, how a breeder plants a puppy, or, or how a breeder plants a litter, what has to be considered, and, and what happens when the, when the bitch gives birth to a litter, and, and how the bitch then raises the litter and so on, how the, how the breeder picks up the right homes for the puppies. Why it's so important that the breeder asks many questions from puppy buyers. Often the problem is that people who don't buy, want to buy pedigree dogs in Finland, they, want, they don't want anyone to ask them any questions. They just want to buy the puppy like this. It's easier to buy a rescue or to get the rescue dog or to buy a puppy from the net, then to go to a breeder and ask, would you please sell me a dog? So I think that we have to open this more and, and to tell about health checks and everything. I think that people don't know enough. And, and there are great stories to be told of different breeders. And, and then we also, as I said, we have to get, give tools to the breeders. So here you see we have a new course or program for breeders being planned. And this is a program where the breeders work together with veterinaries and our kennel consults. We have kennel consults in all ke local kennel clubs. And they study, this is breeders' education, and this is also cooperation with the vets. And in the picture you can see there are two breeders who are also kennel consulta consults. And then the man there, he is um, the breeder of the second biggest kennel in Finland. And we were very happy to have him attending this pilot course. And then the woman besides 
him is, uh, I think, that internationally very well known vet who specialized in breeding and artificial insemination, Maria Dalbum. She is, 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 has done really nice work for the Kennel Club, voluntary work, and she is involved in this program. So we are hoping to have the, this uh, program getting started in, in a few years, and then we will tell the public more about it. This is about self-regulation, self-regulating breeding, and, and showing that we believe in our breeders. Uh, campaigning responsible dog ownership. We publish information on various channels. Our website is uh, very popular, and we also optimize it for Google so that when people search for info information via Google, they always get our website first. That's important, I think. We attend all kinds of fairs and occasions, and we have the dog day and, and, and all kind of co cooperation with different organizations. We are very active on social media, but we know that the Kennel Club uh, social media is not the most popular. It's the groups where people discuss. And so, so we, we are following the major groups also. And then we give specialist lectures and interviews in the media. We, we want to show that we have specialists in the Kennel Club and, and we really, we are experts. We know about dog health and, and dog culture. And this is, I think that there, there are this kind of web page in many countries. This is the Get the Dog page in Finland. And, and we also have this kind of test, what kind of breed would be good for you. It's not easy to make tests like this. And, and the meaning is not that, uh, that you just pick a breed from here, but you may get some information about what kind of breed would be good for you. And then we, of course, want that people take contact with, with the breeders and the breed clubs. Do you recognize this breed? We are, yes, yeah. we are promoting the Finnish breeds everywhere. But this breed is very popular. This is also optimized for Google, of course. Here are our websites. We are just renewing our website because unfortunately it, it's not very good when you look at the pages in mobile phones and so on. So at the end of June, we will get new pages. Then we have this hunky koira, which is this bio dog. We have a canine, digital canine museum, because it's also important to know about the past of dog breeds and dog culture. And there, of course, we have information about the national breeds. Then our magazine has pages of their own. And our biggest uh, dog um, event in Finland, Koira Messut, the winner shows, which I think are popular to many of of our family to many of you, it's, this is the site for them. And as Daiva told that the dog shows are more of a, a happenings for the public, not only the dog, uh, dog show people, that's the same thing in Finland. We have much uh, information for, for people who want to buy a dog. We have the breed stand, different breed stands in the show, and then we give information about different kind of dog hobbies and so on. Now, now I think that we will be giving information about nose work because that's, that's now actual for us. And here you see the koira messut. Uh, then during the dog day, which was on the 24th of April, we also had, had many people participating and, and, and they had uh, making their own happenings. The picture in the middle is from Seinäjoki, a small town in Finland where, where they organized the dog march, all these hunting dog men and so on. They proudly march in the center of Seinäjoki every 
year. And every year the local newspaper makes news about it. Then on the right, there is um, our show house stand. We go to different kind of fairs and we give uh, tips to dog, uh, dog owners how to clip the nails of your dog, how to groom your dog, and how to train your dog and so on. If you are thinking of buying a dog, what should you consider? And here on the left is one of one of our care dogs. Is this familiar to you? We have uh, trained about uh, 106,000 care dogs. They visit uh, daycare centers, schools, and homes for the elderly. And uh, for many people who can't have dogs, of course, it's, it's a nice way of meeting a dog. And, and then it's, it's very emotional, of course. It's a great story about dogs. We have care dogs, and then we have uh, dogs that uh, we call them reading dogs. They go to the libraries, and, and people can read to them. That's a new concept. We, at the moment, we have about 100 reading dogs, but they are becoming very popular. And the kennel, local kennel clubs train the owners of these dogs. As I said, we are very active on the social media. Well, we are a small country, so the figures are not something like you would have in the bigger countries. But I think that we have quite many followers in the Facebook. And people often share our posts in the, on the Facebook. Twitter is, Twitter is not so popular among the public, but all the journalists decision makers, opinion makers, they are there. So we are very active in Twitter. We have 1,400 followers, which is maybe not so much, but it's very effective. We also have Instagram, and I think that we should be more active in using Instagram, especially for the young people. And maybe we should, do, in our youth work, we should give the young people the right to make the posts. It's no idea that the Kennel Club information people make them. It's a, it's a media for the youth. And then we have the YouTube. So when we have the next dog fair in Finland, I'm thinking of, of taking some young people to the fair and letting them make the posts to our social media. It's much more effective. So something about cooperation. cooperation still. On the left side, there's a post by the Finnish uh, forestry government. They have 40 national parks. And now they are campaigning, uh, campaigning uh, the use of the national parks. Many people don't know that you can take a dog to the national park, but the dog has to be on a leash, of course. And, and there's big discussion in Finland about people not moving to moving uh, enough so that people just sit and they don't take walks with their dogs and so on. So the two things are com combined. Uh, we are trying to campaign people to take their dogs for a walk in the national parks. And this is something that we shared in the spring and it was very very much like that. We will do more cooper cooperation with the forestry government. And in the middle, there's a, a post by the Finnish police. They have great many followers in the social media. We made a press release about not leaving your dog to the warm car. This is something you have to, well, tell over and over and over again. People never, <laughs> never <laughs> remember it. So they made a post and said that the Kennel Club vet tells you that it's very dangerous to leave your dog to the car. And this was popular, so again we showed it. We didn't make our own post, we shared this. And on the right side there's a popular women's magazine in Finland, a fashion ma magazine. And, and one of the journalists was a friend of a dog breeder, and she wanted to make a story about how pedigree dogs are being bred, and, and what you, sh you should consider in buying a dog. 
So of course we followed these stories and posts, posts and we shared them. Once again, it was I think that it was more effective than that they did it than that we would have done the same thing. Then our key persons uh, they perform in the media quite often. Here is. Uh, the head of our board, Mr. Harry Lehkonen, he is um, in the morning TV show talking about buying puppies from the internet. And he's accompanied by the head of the board of the Helsinki Animal Welfare Organization. And they both were telling the same story. Get a dog from a responsible breeder or a responsible organization. This was very good. We reached good audience. And on the right side, there's uh, the head of our international unit, Mrs. Kirsi Salmijärvi, with her dog Severi. Severi is the dog that usually performs in, in the news and so on, if we have to take a dog to the media. They are talking about the prices of vets. And, and there's a vet there too. But also the vet and Kirsi Salmijärvi were talking about the same things. So you can have two different kind of organizations, but you can have same kind of ideas and same kind of kind of aims. And in the bottom, there's uh, uh, Katarina Mäki, who's a breeding specialist, and and she usually gives uh, comments to me to the media, and she tells what we have done in order to breed healthier dogs. Here she is lecturing in the Helsinki University for a broad audience. This was streamed, and, and she was telling about good or bad, uh, bad breeding, and actually what what we have done in order to breed better dogs. And every year she goes to lecture to the vet students and tells what the Finnish Kennel Club has done. And this is good because then the vets know that. We really are working for the benefit of dogs. I think that we can do so much more together, as Diva said, participation, cooperation. We want to promote positive attitude, not shoot ourselves in the leg telling about the problems. We have to be proud of the work that we are doing, and, and we have to tell about the solutions. And we also have to listen to our target groups for better communications. This is why we made a survey this year for our members, and we also made a survey for our cooperation groups, and we are just waiting for the results. I think that we have to continue making these surveys and getting the feedback. And my boss, Marco, told me that show also the resources that you have in communications in Finland. So this is my team, and I'm very proud of them. As you see, the <laughs> they are quite young, and they usually they make very challenging questions to me. They see something in the social media or in the public, they come and ask me, how should we respond to this? Well, what should we tell? Do people believe what we are telling? And, and I think that that's a very effective way of working. So I'm, I'm really happy for this. We have a communication specialist, public relations coordinator. Uh, we are doing more lo lobbying, and, and next year will be a public relations team year in, at the Finnish Kennel Club. And as we are renewing our web pages, we also have a communication trainee. It's good, so we can publish the pages in June. Uh, this was it. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Okay. 